Hi developers, in this video we'll learn how to create an Azure Kubernetes service, AKS, using the Azure portal. Through the process of creating the cluster, we'll explore options like the size of the VMs and the number of those VMs. Then we'll connect to the dashboard in order to monitor the status or the health of our uh, Kubernetes clusters. After that, we'll create a first deployment using the dashboard where we specify the uh, Docker container that we want to use along with the service in order to route the user requests or the traffic into our uh, pods. So join me to show you how we can do this. So I'll do that from the Microsoft Azure portal right here. So I'll go here to create a resource. Then from here, I go and choose Kubernetes Service, which stands for AKS. I need to go through all those uh, steps in order to create the uh, service, but this is really uh, easy. So let's get started. The first step right here is to choose my subscription. So here I have multiple ones, so I need to choose the one in which I want to create the cluster. Then I need to specify the resource group. And the resource group is a group of resources that help us to handle all those resources as it was one resource. For example, for deletion, editing, or creation. So let's create a new resource dedicated for our uh, service. So here I call it Kubernetes Demo. Then we need to specify a name for our cluster. Here I'll go and use again the name Kubernetes dash demo, then the region in which my uh, cluster will be hosted in. So Azure have multiple regions and all over the world. So I need to specify in which region I want to host my app. I'll put it in West Europe. I'm fine with that. Then here we can choose which version we want to use for Kubernetes. So here I'll choose the latest version, but of course you can use whatever version that starts from 17.7. I'll pick the latest one. Then we need to specify the DNS name prefix. And again, I'll use the same uh, naming convention that I started with. Then here in the scale part, we need to choose the virtual machine that we want to use. Here by default, the portal suggests that we use this VM DS2 V2, which is a standard one and it have two virtual CPUs and 7 gigabits memory. I'm fine with that. If you want to change that to use a smaller or bigger one, then I can go here and say change uh, the uh, size of the VM. Then after that, you need to specify the node count. And this is the number of the uh, nodes that we want our Kubernetes uh, service to, uh, to support. So here, by default, it's set to three, but here for demoing, I just ask for only uh, one, um, one node. Once we are fine with that, now we'll go next to the authentication process. For the authentication here, we'll leave everything by default, but here you can notice that you have some interesting options. For example, for the airbag, so you can enable uh, access to the Kubernetes um, cluster through role base access. So you can define an admin, a user, developer, whatever roles you want to, to add. That adds to the security of, your, of managing your Kubernetes. Then we'll move to networking. And for networking, you will be, I will be changing the value for HTTP client routing to say no, we don't want to use it. We'll be using some other uh, technologies later. I keep the network configuration to basic. I don't want for this demo, I, I'm not going to, uh, too far for the networking. Then let's go to the monitoring. And right here, we'll, um, we'll keep this enable container monitoring so that we can get insights about the health of our containers. And we'll see later, I will be able to see uh, charts for the health for these containers. Then will um, we'll create a new workspace for the log analytics so that we can see in real time 
the logs coming from our Kubernetes cluster. Let's next move to the tags. And right here, it's just used by Azure. This is not related to the Kubernetes. It's used by uh, your Azure subscription in order to uh, define the uh, services using this uh, tag. So you can, you can then filter by uh, pricing for each tag, for example. Then the final step is to review what we have uh, choose it as options. Then from here, once everything is validated for the uh, VM, the number of nodes, and so on, we can um, click the create button. Once the validation passes, now we can create this uh, service. And here it tells that the uh, service or the creation is in progress, and that takes around five minutes in order to create this uh, cluster. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait for five minutes, then we will come later. Do not wait so much. Here I have already created another a Kubernetes, uh, AKS service. So if I go to resource groups right now, I can find this one that I have created. So here you see that it also created two other resource groups. Let's see each of them. So let's start by the one I have created here with different name of app for KS, AKS, RG. And here we find that here we do have our uh, cluster. If we take a look at the other uh, resource groups created, then here we see all the elements that comes or that are um, essential to run a Kubernetes a cluster. So here we see we have the load balancer, the public IP address, a disk attached, another disk, availability set, and we see also the virtual machine that will run the uh, cluster, route table, and so on. So those are all the dependencies needed for Kubernetes in order to be able to run. Another resource group created here is the default resource group, and this one is used for log analytics. Let's go back to the main one for here, the AKS, and let's click on AKS right here. So here, because our service is new, we'll have this uh, dashboard that have this option for view Kubernetes dashboard. If I click on it, then here it will show me the three um, needed steps or the four steps in order to be able to um, view the dashboard for Kubernetes. So first of all, we need to go and install the Azure CLI. Here you have the link, so you follow the instructions, and then you will be able to uh, install it. It tells that you cannot run those commands from the, other, uh, from the uh, Azure uh, PowerShell or the Azure um, uh, Cloud Shell right here. You need to run them from your local machine. So here I have already configured the AZ AKS install CLI in order to install the CLI. So I have done that through all the steps described in this link. Then here I have already configured the AKS get uh, credentials. And once you have uh, done that, or actually let's run this one so I can show you how it works. So here I will paste the uh, code from the portal. And here for me, because I have multiple uh, subscriptions, I need to add an attribute uh, for my uh, subscription. So that should be dash dash subscription, the name of my uh, subscription, which here I'm using Microsoft Azure sponsorship. I click enter. And what this will do, it will uh, merge the cluster or the Kubernetes that service that they have created with uh, as the uh, current context. So now I'm ready to uh, run the last, the last command, which is browse, which will show me my, um, my dashboard. So let's add that. And with this one also, we need to specify which subscription that hosts my IKS service. So I specify again dash dash subscription, the name of my subscription. So this is the, the dashboard you will get on a fresh install. Let's start here by creating our, or by deploying our first Docker image on this cluster. 
So I'll do that using the dashboard and in a, in a later video, I will do that using the YAML files. Let's start simple right here. So I'll go to create and here I'll use the create an app form. Let's call my app Angular app on Azure. Then here I need to specify the um, my Docker image uh, name. So here I'll go and use this one that I have already created in the previous uh, video. So I'll copy the name of this image. So this one is um, public, so you can use it if you want. Let's go here and let's put, then we need to specify the version of this one. So I take the V1 tag. Let's use that. And here for the number of these pods, let's say we want to use three pods. This means it will uh, run three Docker uh, containers. Then for the service here, we need to specify an external service because we want to expose this app to an external endpoint. So this one will create a service you which uses the load balancer in order to be able to be to access this web app from uh, an external ip so let's say the port right here i want to use the port um, 80 for example and i want to map it to port 80 also let's now click deploy to start the deployment and right here you see that now we have um, a deployment in progress we do also have the creation of the pods and the replica sets in progress so what this will do it will go to docker hub it will pull this uh, image that we have specified then it will try to deploy it to our three pods then it will create the service that will uh, load or that will um, distribute the load to those three pods so this will take some seconds and if I refresh right here, it's done. Now we should be able to, um, to browse our application. It just takes a bit of time in order to create the uh, service to get an external endpoint and here within three to uh, maximum four minutes, you will get your external uh, endpoint uh, available. So now if I go inside the service, from here, I can go to this external uh, endpoint. So if I click on it, it will open a new window. And here I can access my Angular application running on Docker containers, running on Kubernetes on Azure. Great. So now let's go back to the dashboard. And from here, we can start uh, monitoring our application. We'll have some graphs that we'll display later to tell us about the health of our uh, deployment. And here we have all the information ne needed. So we can uh, view those information from the dashboard, but we can also view them from the uh, terminal or from the uh, command line. So here I'll go and start a new command line because this one right here is still connected to the uh, dashboard. And here, because they have already run the, uh, those three commands from the command line, I'll be already connected to my uh, Kubernetes on Azure. So from here, I can say kubectl get services, for example, to get the list of my uh, services. And here you see the service that we have uh, created, its type and all the information related to that service. We can also go and say kubectl get pods. So this will give us all our three pods. Then we'll go and say kubectl get deployments. And here are some important information about our uh, deployment. The dashboard also provides us the option to scale the uh, deployment or, or to scale our application. How we can do that? Right here, if I go to the uh, deployment, we'll have an option to scale. So I can either go here and say, I want to scale from three to five nodes, or I can also go to edit the JSON uh, deployment file which where here we have the property 
replica which tells how many no pods I want to um, to run for my app. So here we can say we want to go from three to uh, ten, for example. Then I'll go and say update, and this will trigger um, Kubernetes to uh, start a new uh, replica set, where here it will try to add um, another uh, pods. So currently we do have three pods, but it will try to add another seven pods in order to reach the 10 required pods. And here within some seconds, it just created the 10 pods or the 10 replica that each one is running my Docker uh, image. I hope you liked this video and join me in the next one to show you how we can create a deployment and a service not from within the dashboard as we have done today but using the deployment yaml uh, files